perfect. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing going. So, welcome everybody to Studio Review. As always, feel free to shout out your questions as you go through. Uh, if anybody has any specific questions or wants me to focus on anything in particular from the studio, just let me know um, now, or you can let me know whenever that uh, section actually comes up. All right, I think I got enough stuff here. Yeah, we're good, good, good. good. No, okay. it's 8.3.1. Yeah, so as long as you're staying in the 8, eight version, that's gonna be fine. Um, okay. Yeah, you shouldn't see any any issues. Because I just, I know that in some outside research I was trying to do to figure that out, they said that it was retroactive. So it usually goes back and gets whatever you need from a previous version. Is that a correct statement? Yeah, yeah. So depending on what we're talking about exactly, I mean, 8.3 versus 8.2, they're going to be minor changes. It's when we're jumping up full numbers like 9 to 10 to 12, something like that. That's when breaking changes might occur in those newer things. So yeah, you're, you're absolutely fine in those minor changes. Yeah, it won't be, won't be a problem, hopefully. Taylor Grain Saddle as always. Programs, software always likes to throw those little curveballs to us. So you never know. All right, everybody ready? Awesome. Let's go ahead and get started then. 28.8 Studio Angular Part 1. In this chapter, you have learned about the Angular file structure, templates, and components. Over the next three classes, you will build a mission planning dashboard using your Angular skills. 28.8.1 Mission Planning Dashboard. A useful and common front-end application is a dashboard. It shows summary of information about a topic, helping users of the web app make informed decisions. Absolutely correct. Dashboards, dashboards are across a lot of applications that we use on the web. They're always there. Always, always there. Financial, uh, healthcare, literally anything down to Facebook. You have a dashboard. Anything there, just like it's just a lot of information. So that's a very correct statement. So we're gonna be creating that space mission planning dashboard. Awesome. 28.8.2, create Angular projects. Number one, launch Visual Studio Code. If you created an Angular practice folder earlier in the chapter, use file menu to open it. If you did not create a file practice one, make one. All right. Open the terminal root of your Angular practice folder. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna come over here. What I'm gonna do is cd down a directory. I'm gonna type in ls to list all of my, excuse me, all my directories there. I did create an Angular practice, so that's what I'm gonna type out now. Did I type in the right one? Yeah, I did, underscore. I'm gonna say Angular, oh, so what am I doing? cd in Angular, underscore practice, just like that, press enter. Awesome, I have successfully changed my directory over to there. Open a terminal at the root of your Angular practice. Okay, create a new Angular project by running the ng new studio or Angular Studio part one. So I'm gonna copy this entire code right here. Actually, minus the period there at the very end. Try not to get that because that will just throw a lot of things off. So I paste that in there. ng new Angular dash studio dash part one. Press enter and what's gonna do is it's going to create me a brand new Angular project. So let's just hold on for a second. Oh, forgot about this. But I like Angular routing. No, not at this time. We're not going to talk about that just yet. And then we're going to do CSS here. We're going to keep it simple. Awesome. All right. So in case you're wondering what Angular routing is, it's just about navigation throughout your website. So if you want to have multiple pages, Angular routing is a possibility to explore that with all the CSS stuff. CSS can be simplified in some manners. Those were other options to do so, but we're just gonna keep it to CSS. We're gonna stick with that. No reason going anywhere else right now. And this is where we sit in silence, unless anyone has a good story. Or dad joke, I'll take dad jokes. Nope, gonna keep making me hear crickets. All right, let me find out any dad jokes right now. Oh, come on, nobody, not even a whisper. All right. Tell you this, there's a lot of NPM installations and it only gets worse, folks. Write down those dad jokes because I'm gonna need to hear them because there's a lot of compilations. The bigger the technology gets, the longer these load times are. I'm watching, I'm writing down everyone's name here. I'm giving you homework, dad jokes, need them. All right, we're good, let's go. Moving on, so we created our new Angular project. So when that happens, if we type in ls, of course, what's gonna, we're gonna see here is the actual directory was created. 
This thing will create the directory for us and put all of those files that we will need to start out an Angular application inside of it. So perfect, that's what we wanna see. So on to 3A here. When prompted, use, oh no, for uh, routing. I, we just knew that on the top of our head because we've done that before in the exercises. When prompted, select the style sheet for CSS. So we did both of those things. On to number four. When the process finishes, use the file menu to open the Angular Studio Part 1 in VS Code. Let's go and do that right now. We're gonna do open up Visual Studio Code, which should already be there. It's from lecture previously. So I'm gonna say file, open a folder here. I'm gonna go into our Angular practice, double clicking on that, single clicking on that one, on the Angular Studio Part 1, press open, and just like magic, voila, here we are. Cool, cool. Everyone's probably like, Kyle, get to the good stuff. Oh, we will. We will. We've got to do all the hard stuff first. In the terminal, use PWD to check your position in the file tree. If necessary, navigate to the Angular Studio Part 1 directory. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Because right now, I am only in Angular practice. If you didn't want to do the PWD, PWD is just going to give you your current directory there. That's going to be my current directory. So let's go ahead and CD into that. So I'm going to say LS there. Just get my name. So CD Angular Studio Part 1. Press Enter. And there we go hard part done. Let's go ahead and continue on. Install the dependencies by running npm install. I believe it already did that for me. Uh, it did, but we can go ahead and do it again. So it's a part of the creation process that's going to run that npm install. Well, again, what npm install does is that it goes into your uh, package.json right here, and all of these dependencies, these have to be installed in order for your actual application to run dev dependencies as well when we're doing development. So if you're asking yourself, what does npm install do? It's taking all these npm packages and bringing them onto your machine. Remember, npm node package manager, we're using or utilizing packages across the entire spectrum to make an application out of that. So those modules did, we exported stuff, so we can use in other applications. These were people kind enough out there or different companies to provide us code in order to create more and better applications using their packages. So that's what npm install does. All right, moving on, verify that the application will run by running ng-serve. Yeah, I'm going a little bit quicker here because we've seen this in lecture. So we need to get to the fun stuff here. ng-serve, but remember with this, it's going to start up that server. It's gonna start hosting our Angular application out there, locally of course, but on a server technically. That's where all of our applications are actually stored, on servers, they're running out there, we hit them, with a get request and they send back that website to view. That's exactly what's going on here, but just in our local environment, our local machines, the one that you're looking at right now. All right, compiled successfully. Let's hop over here to this. What I'm gonna do is say plus localhost port 42,000, or 200, excuse me. And there we go, welcome to Angular Studio part one. How did I know that it was this port right here? We go back over to our terminal view. It says to do that right there. Awesome. So this is just an arbitrary port that they chose to run Angular projects on. All right, any questions up to this point? We just started and created our application or our Angular application here. So Kyle, when I do that, I get um, a slightly different looking page that says Angular Studio, Studio 21 practice app is running exclamation point. Are we talking about this page right here? Or are we talking about the actual? Right there. Yeah, when Angular. I go to the local host. So it depends on the version that you have installed for Angular. If you run ng space dash dash version, does it say 8.2 or 8.5? So to everybody out there, if we stop our ng serve, again, I press control C. It's also control C on a Windows as well ng dash dash version, if we look at what's going on under the hood here, we're gonna see that I see an Angular CLI of 8.2.2. So Amy, which one do you see? Like nothing came up. Okay, if you do ng space dash dash version, what happens? Nothing. We literally can also, literally we, can also we can also do ng uh, version uh, parenthesis v. That's what I did. It gave me this stuff. Okay, ng, what was that command? ng space ng version? ng space version and space and the, like the parenthesis and inside the V. 
Oh, like it that? worked for me, so. Okay. It gave Possibly. me a point to that too. If you type in NG at all, Amy, what comes up? So just NG in the press enter. Oh, you might be on mute too if you're. Sorry about that. Yeah, let me, I'm bit. going back to Visual Studio because I was in Bash. Uh, uh, tells me available commands, blah, blah, blah. Let me try it in here. Okay. So, and I think, Hannah, I, I'm seeing the command that you're talking about. NG looks like okay. that. Eh. NG version? Oh, yes. And then. Yes. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah. Okay. I'm, it says 13.3.0. Okay. So for that one, if you are curious, uh, you, so you're going to need eight if you want it to look like that one. I okay. posted in the lecture questions channel. And I'll just go ahead and get it on the recording too right now. And we're looking at these three commands if you installed the wrong, uh, not the, uh, it's, just, it's just the, not the version we're using okay. in class. So I'd highly recommend switching to eight. Yeah. So see. uninstall uh, with the first one. You're going to clean up your cache with the second one and then install 8.2.2 .2 on your machine. Okay, I took a picture, so I'm good. Right, thank okay. you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so with 13, usually I'm like, I'm trying to be chillaxed about it, but 13, <laughs> those might be a little bit high just for anybody else that's out there that's also running with us. Just, yeah, we want to keep it in version 8 so we can keep everything consistent. All right, any other questions? Well, Kyle, for me, um, it, it, I installed 8.2.2 now instead of the 13.1. And then when I did the command ng new Angular Studio part one, um, it says schematic workflow failed. Okay, you might want to close down your terminal and reopen it, but I might have to take a look closer look at that. Okay, uh, thank you. That issue. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Excuse me. Yeah, sorry, that was like a typical IT reply. I'd say restart it and try again, because um, when you do those in, uh, uninstalls and restalls, they are reinstalls, they, they tend to sometimes. Thanks, Ken. Absolutely. All right, any other questions? No? All right, so eight we already did. It says view, our site, or view your site in the browser at that local host port 4200 there. So A, you should see a header that says, welcome to Angular Studio part one. And that's absolutely what we see. So if we want to see that again, we come over to our other tab. That's what we see at the very top. So awesome. And then number nine, stage and commit the files before starting on the features. Okay. All right. All right. Interesting. So we'll say git init to start our stuff. Unless there's a git already in there. I didn't think so. And that's all we are. Okay. That is nice. I forgot that Angular did that. So what we can do is say we can get add dash a or get add period that adds all the files in there. Then we say get commit started studio 18. I think it's 18, right? Yeah. Awesome. 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 We committed everything. Let's go ahead and get on started. So any other questions? Any other questions? All right. Cool. This tip right here is telling us how to exactly stop ng serve. Remember, ng serve is stopped with the control plus C. It is in that both Macs and Windows. All right. On to 28.8.3 requirements. The mission dashboard you are creating will eventually look like this and then gives us the general description of what it should look like. So let's go ahead and see how we should create this 28.8.3.1 update starter page content. The default starter page created by, the Angular can, or created by Angular contains default text images and links. Your job is to remove the default content. Clear out the contents of app.component.html. And then, let's, I'm going to see that. Okay, once they clear out stuff, I just want to see what we're going to add next. So type in the text add components here into the app component HTML. Okay, well, I'm going to do both that thing. So I'm going to have you read the next one. So I'm going to come over back to our studio here. Go into my source folder because that's where everything is going to be. It says to do under app, app.component.html. That's what it said. So it needs us to clear this out. So I'm going to highlight it. I'll press backspace and then paste add components here. And then of course save it. Once I do that, I come back over to my browser, click on this and what we call is a hot reload. 
So basically, sometimes it will hot reload, but if I re I'm actually not going to do that because I'm not loading any serve. So let me go ahead and start that. I apologize. Right now, if I refresh this, what would happen is that we get a big old brownie face. So we're going to let that ng serve here run just for a moment. Of course, that's going to compile straight from the top. Just a little bit faster, though. There it is. See, told you, dad jokes, need them. All right, can fix yeah. Compiled successfully, fantastic. Let's go back over here and refresh again. Now we see that all of that content that's been cleared in add components here is in the top left corner. Perfect, that is what we wanted to see. Let's go on ahead and continue on. Run ng serve, it's not already running. Thank you for that one, I should have read that first. And then view the app in your browser to verify that the words add components here is the only thing that appears on the page. That is correct. So it looks like we're done with this section. Let's go ahead and move on to 28.8.3.2. Header component. You will need to create a component that shows the title, mission name, and carrier rocket. In the terminal, navigate to this folder, C or source app folder. Create a header component using ng, ng component header, and then provide the HTML. So let's go ahead and take this step by step. So in the terminal, navigate to the source app folder. Let's go and do that first. I come over here to my terminal, press control C to stop ng serve. And now I change the directory. And it said go into source and go into app. Source. Yeah, CD. I don't know why you didn't find that. There we go. And CD into app. There we go. We press L. Press ls, we see that we have all our components here. Next, it says to run that command, which was ng component header. I just need to get that component name. So ng, then g, g for generate, short for, uh, short for generate, and then component, and then header was the component that we need to create. We press enter. What it's going to do is some, some things behind the scenes, but the things that we see, it's going to create some files for us. Very nice of it. Let's go see what those files that it created right here in this header. Awesome. We have four brand spanking new files here. And that's what we're going to be using here to create the header. Let's move on to the next step. Finally, number th or sorry, in number three here, in the header.component.html, add the HTML. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Perfect. Let's go over now to the header.component.html. Make sure that one is selected. And then we're going to paste in the HTML that was provided. Awesome. Now, pop quiz. We just pasted this HTML in here, but what? Anybody remember what this does? Anybody? Placeholder? Not necessarily a placeholder. Yes, I think template, kind of. Well, honestly, so we'll, we're about to find out specifically what it does. But what these double brackets are telling us is that it wants to insert information from our TypeScript file for this component there. It's going to take the class variable mission name and insert it. So we're going to see that in action here shortly. Up oh, at this point, though, I'm going to pause for a moment. Any questions? Can you say right. that, repeat that one more time, Kyle, uh, about this line two? What well, you just said? Really yeah, absolutely. I'll say it really fast because we're going to see it actually there. But this is just to say I want to insert mission name from my TypeScript file into here, into my HTML. Basically, it's just taking information and inserting it into our HTML. Remember, it kind of like the uh, string literal, just a little bit. It's mm -hmm. inserting information. So, yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and move on to part four here then and see it more in action. So number four, add the variables mission name and rocket name to the header component in the header.component.ts. So I see my export class header component and implements on, uh, on init. So I'm going to copy these two. Note that I did not copy the extent of all this code. I copied only the variables itself. This was only given to us up here to tell us the area that it wants to paste them. So it's in the header component. So let's go check that out. To get there, I need to go to the header.component.ts file here. And I see this was what was in our, uh, in our studio. I need to paste those right below it. So there we go. So that was four. 
Let's move to the next section here. Number five, add a reference to the header component in the app.component.html. Now, if you haven't noticed, it's very specific about this. We need to really tell which file it wants to put each of these things in. Well, when you get to assignment six, hint, hint, make sure you're really noticing where they want you to put all this stuff. That will be the more complex part. Let's go ahead and put this reference in the app.component.html. I copy that code, come over to the app.component.html, and I'm gonna go ahead and put the header above this text here. Just because headers are always at the top, so I'm gonna paste it at the top. Add components here can be in the second. If you did it the other way around, nothing wrong with that. All right, that was number five. There's no questions, let's keep going on to number six. View the app in your browser to verify that the title, mission name, and rocket name are visible. Let's go ahead and do that. You come over here to this tab, what I'm gonna do is refresh this and notice that Kyle, you still are not running ng serve. So I go ahead and start running that and this is where I pause. I'm waiting still for dad jokes or story time. Either one. We got 100% to go on compiling. I'm gonna force, I'm gonna find out a way for Zoom to make me force some of you to talk to me. Now you think I just wanna sit here in silence? It is. 8.30 at night, and I have nobody to chit-chat, and I'm still doing coding, all right? Woke up doing coding, I'm going to bed doing coding, no one wants to talk to me, whatever. You're lucky, compiled successfully. All right, let's go ahead and move on. Localhost, 4200 here, we're gonna refresh, and a refresh for us, fantastic. And lucky us, our header is showing successfully. So cool, cool, it looks like this is good so far. I'm gonna pause here, any questions? All right, no questions. That means we get to move on to 28.8.3.3, the crew component. Next, you need to make a component to show a list of crew members. Create the component by running ngg component crew. So that's what we're gonna do next. Now, what I don't like about this too much is that it doesn't tell us what directory to be in, but I'm gonna read between the lines and say that, okay, they wanted me to create the header in the app, uh, in the app folder. So I'm gonna say, all right, I'm gonna assume they want me to do it in the crew one politically correctly in business, if no one told me exactly where to go, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna just make the assumption because you didn't tell me exactly where to put that file in the demands, list of demands you have. So, that being said, we're in our app directory here. I'm gonna go ahead and paste in that command. So, ngg for generate, remember that's just short for generate, component, because we wanna create a component, crew. Press enter, again, it's gonna do all that stuff behind the scenes for us. Now, before I leave, this time, I'm actually type in ng serve, so we don't have to have Kyle demanding story time. We'll let that start up as we move back over here. All right, so one is all finished. Let's move on to two. Set the contents of crew.component.html to be the code below. So I'm gonna copy the code below, all six lines here. Come over to our crew component, crew.component.html, and I'm gonna paste in that HTML there. Awesome. Save that. Perfect. Let's keep moving on. Add a reference to the header component in app.component.html. So in this one, it wants us to put it in, or we want to do the app.crew. Remember, we're not going to copy all the code here because if we recall from the previous section, we already placed in this app-header. So I'm just going to copy the app-crew because I'm extremely lazy and I don't want to type that out. And <coughs> I'll give it to you, so might as well use it. So we move down to app.component.html, and I'm gonna paste this below the header, just like it was visually in our studio. At this point now, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this add components here. Why I did this is because I didn't see it in the picture that they just sent it to, and we know now to add the components here because that's what we're doing. I'm gonna go ahead and save this now, and it looks like this. Perfect. So it looks like now, if we refresh our page, we should look like this. So let's go ahead and do that. Ah, where's my stuff at? There it is. Come over here, and that's exactly what it looks like. It says our crew are Jessica Watkins, and then the rest of our crew down there. So we are all good. Raja and Jasmine, all right. We all have our crew together. Let's go ahead, if there's no questions about this, move on further 
And we'll, yeah, I will pause here. Any questions? How's everybody doing so far? I have a dad joke for you. Ooh, ooh. Uh, wait, wait for it, wait for it. Did All right, I save it, him? save it. Oh, oh, go, go, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. All right. No, I'll save it. You, we gotta, we'll have another. I think we're gonna have another energy serve. Save that, we're gonna need it. All right. Where am I at? All right, there I am. Okay, any other questions? And if it's a good one, like that's plus 10 brownie points. And that can, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot. All right. Yes. All right, everyone, let's keep going. 28.8.3.4, equipment component. Now that you need to create a component to show a list of, oh, now you need to create a component to show a list of equipment. Number one, create an equipment, create an equipment component named equipment. Okay, well, it doesn't even give us the code anymore. So it just assumes now, because we have done it twice, that's what we know how to do. So let's hop over there and do that. So I'm going to control C here, and I'm going to do an NG, and then help me out create this one. It didn't give me the code, so I'm go I need some help here. How are we going to create this equipment component? What comes after this? G. G, what does G stand for? Generate. Very good. Generate. So NGG. And then what comes next? Equipment. Equipment. Component. Very good. Definitely. Component. We need to tell Angular what to generate. In that case, we need it to generate a component. Equipment. And then comes the name of the component. And very good. Yes, equipment. Just like that. So let's go and run that. Perfect. All right, everyone. We are good there. So let's go ahead and make sure that equipment has been created. Fantastic. Number two, the component should display the following, an H3 that contains equipment and a UL, which stands for unordered list, that contains LI for list item for habitat don't, habitat, yeah, don't, I said it right, drones, food containers, and oxygen tanks. Let's go ahead and create that code. What I'm gonna do is copy this because I have the memory of a goldfish. So we're gonna go up into equipment. We're gonna go into our equipment.component.html and we're gonna remove this paragraph thing because we don't need the paragraph, it just auto generates in there. And I'm gonna leave a comment and how we do that in HTML is that open bracket, exclamation point, double dash. And we are gonna just paste in what it wants right there. So let's go ahead and do that. So it says that an H3 that contains equipment H, remember, standing for header, so we say H3 there, and then equipment. Perfect. And then a UL, again, or an ordered list, that contains LIs for four different pieces of equipment. So I'm going to say LI, and it says we need it for those four things. So what I'm going to do, of course, is just copy that, because that is just data entry there for that moment. So I'm going to put that all in there. Awesome. After that, I'm going to go and remove the comment. And there's our HTML. Awesome. Any questions about this? Okie dokie. Let's keep moving on then. Number three, add the equipment component to app.component.html using the HTML below. Notice that the div surrounding the crew and equipment, or sorry, <laughs> Notice the div surrounding the crew and equipment components. All right, so at this point now, I see I have to add a few extra things in here. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna copy the whole shebang this time. And I'm gonna bring that over to our app.component.html. So now I'm gonna paste in the whole thing there. Why? Again, lazy. Did not wanna put that div on the top and bottom. And it gives you the entire code perfectly however it wants to be laid out. So here we go. All right, after that is completed, any other questions about that? So what, how will be the input if you don't give the div class? Say that one more time. So in the line number two, if you don't give the div class equal to box, and the line number five, if you don't give, what will happen to the output? Um, it won't be wrapped in a div, so that might throw off just the view of it if it wants to be contained in a div. So 
it just might have a small a little bit of 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 a visual issue so that depends on class box if we add styling which it looks like we're about to on part four this styling will not be provided for this div section so right now vg to answer your question nothing will be impacted too much but it looks like it has a class of box so we might have to include that there so right now it won't do anything but in the future it will definitely have an effect okay all right that being said let's go into four and do that then so add the css to the top or to the file app.component.css to horizontally align the crew and equipment list. Without the CSS, the equipment list will appear below the crew list. So awesome. Let's go ahead and copy that. Let's go over to our, so that, oh, excuse me, I'm losing my train of thought here. Add the CSS to the file app.component.css to horizontally align the crew and the equipment list. So let's go ahead and do that. We go into exactly where it says the app.component.css and I'm gonna go ahead and paste in this dot box class. Awesome. So we paste it in there. We come down here and it looks like it's going to want us to refresh again because it's giving that visual of what it's supposed to look like. So let's go ahead and go over here and we're going to refresh. Of course, I keep forgetting. So, sir. All right, Ann, what's that dad joke? I'm very excited. Uh, I asked my dog, what's two minus two? He said nothing. nothing. Oh my gosh. Anyway, sorry. I love it. No, and it's dogs too. No, thank you. That is what I'm looking for tonight. Everyone take notice. Plus 10 brownie points, Ann. What can they get you? Really, really nothing, but I appreciate it. Coffee. Make like a <laughs> Coffee, exactly. <laughs> All right, we're compiled successfully. Fantastic. Let's come back over here. Press enter and try this again. Oh, it already did it for us. Awesome. So we see our crew with all three of our astronauts there, and then the equipment with the habitat zone drones, food containers, and the oxygen tanks. Those are new. So it looks like we have our equipment there successfully. Any questions on what we just saw there? All right. In that case, let's keep moving on then. So on to 28.8.3.5 experiments component. Number one, finally add an experiments component that contains the HTML below. All right, so basically now, as you can tell, it started out with telling us like, all right, here's all the commands, what you need to do down to add the component and here's the HTML that you want to have in it and that's it. So as you can see, this is how assignments will be getting. This is how basically, what in the end you will want to, or what you'll be working with is very minuscule instructions, not for assignment six necessarily, but for more and more assignments as we move forward. So we just got to really read between the lines here very, very heavily. So add that experiments component. Let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to hop over back over here. We got to press control C to stop this. We're going to say NG, G, gen, uh, G for generate, and then component, and then experiments. Press enter and perfect. Awesome, awesome. Have that all in there. So that is all started. I'm gonna say ng serve for that. And we're gonna come over here and we see that experiments has been created. Awesome. So what we need to do is that the next thing it had was the HTML that we need to provide in there. So I'm gonna copy these experiments here, come over to our HTML file and paste in the HTML, just like that. Perfect. So we paste in the HTML there, and now our experiments HTML component has been created, but it's not been utilized. So let's see what we need to do for that. Make the list of experiments show up to the right of equipment list. All right, let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is plug it in, come down here to app.component.html, and now I'm going to use that new component we just built. So I'm going to say app dot app dash oh what is it experiments experiments. There we go. Perfect, I placed it next to equipment. And we're gonna come over here and see what happens. And it looks like it is to the right of equipment. Awesome. 
Now, if you're asking yourself, why is it to the right of equipment? What's going on with that? Remember, we apply that CSS and the, uh, like the, uh, the actual magic that's happening there is this display flex. It's going to put things next to each other if there's enough space. So that's what's making it go next to each other. Flexbox is a very powerful tool in CSS. So if you're ever wondering how to do that stuff, feel free to check it out. All right. So that was number two. <coughs> when you're done, it should look like this. As we just saw, it looks exactly like that. So we're looking good so far. All right, 28.8.4, commit your work. Be sure to stage and commit your changes. Verify that the branch and status of the files. Commit your changes and then create a new repository and on your GitHub, push all the commits to that. I will be doing one and two, I will not be doing three. So let's go back over to terminal and do that. So I'm gonna stop this. What I need to do is I run that git add dash a there and then git commit dash am completed studio up until a point. I don't think we're done just yet. We haven't done bonus missions, so I'm gonna say Why that. Why am instead of just the usual dash m? Oh, that's that's my bad. Uh, that's that's my routine. Uh, you can just do dash m for message. Dash a also includes all, so it's like a secondary just in case all of making sure all the files get in there. So you can just do a dash m. I apologize. Uh, let me get that. There we go. Yeah, it's how you just pack a bunch of parameters in there all at one time but continue with dash m dash am is just me all right awesome so we verified oh we'll go and verify our status so what we do is get status there nothing to commit awesome cool we have completed 28.8.4 there and we have finished up the studio before the bonus mission so as always feel free now to take your exit if you do not want to see the bonus missions but this is what we had to do for the studio so any questions anything we just saw uh, so when I was working on it, I could see it whenever I was, you know, going back to the Angular Studio on like the local host. Mm -hmm. But then after I added the crew, like I, I so I could see after I added the crew, but then when I complete on going further, it disappeared. So I got nothing on my page now, <laughs> but so all my stuff happened... in my. Okay. Yeah, yeah, when that happens, right click on your page, press inspect, and then if nothing's appearing on your page, your errors will appear here. Don't worry about the error uh, connection refused to connect, but you'll see errors over here. So you, you might see something going on there. Sounds like maybe a component wasn't placed somewhere, or maybe there might be a typo in one of the components. Um, okay. I had a quick question. It was more logistical. I came into the studio late, um, but me and my group were trying to work through the first part in the terminal, um, and we never got a prompt about using routing to enter the in for no. Um, it just wasn't working when we were trying to do the like add the new Angular Studio part one. Is there a different way to go about that, not using the terminal if it's not computing or working? So make sure that if you type in ng, space version that you're using version eight so it could be okay. 8.2 8.5 so can you make sure that that is i am not using that version i've tried like multiple times to download it and it wouldn't download um and the only one that would download was the 13 so i'll try to work on that and figure out why it's not downloading okay yeah and of course just reach out to me if you're finding that's a that's a tough issue um inside of the lecture questions chat there is three commands there to run if you want to try to reinstall it um and also uninstalling the previous one I've okay the, thanks i've tried those pretty much throughout the whole studio review and it just is coming back with a bunch of errors when i do the cache clean okay um, don't worry about the cache clean then that's just that's yeah, yeah don't worry about the cache clean if that's coming back with errors just then run the install the cache clean is kind of just well after, I, well, after I run the, ins so I do the uninstall and I do the install. And then when I do npm dash dash or whatever, ng dash dash version, it's still showing up that it's version 13. Mm, okay. So after you, if you try to do the uninstall again, close down your terminal and then reopen a new one. 
and then do an ng version to see if it's even still there. Because okay. if you want to install it, it should not be there anymore. And then try to install it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I apologize for the versions. I had not tested out this. Usually this does work for NPM, but I understand that Angular is a little bit heavier. So it might have some implications. Let your TA know, let myself know, and we can try to work around the issue. All right, any other questions out there? All right, then for that then, let's go and hop into 28.8.5 bonus missions. Display the crew members by adding an array of crew names. In crew.component.ts, add crew, and then all of these things in there. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is do that first. So it says get all of these crew members there and add them into our code. And it says in the crew.components.ts. So I'm going the wrong way. Crew.component.ts. Remember, this is our TypeScript file here. So I'm going to paste, and this is also a class. So I paste my class variables at the very top, just like that. And it's coming in directly from that file here. So there we go. Once we did that, in the crew.component.html, use references like li with crew zero to display the crew names. Okay, let's go ahead and do that then. It literally gives us the first one here, so that's very nice. So we're gonna hop over here to our crew.component.html. Remember in here, this is where all of our crew stuff is. If we go to our crew.ts file down here, see that it's all three of the same names here. So this is gonna be at index zero, index one, and index two. So let's go ahead and utilize that information. So remember, if I wanna insert information into my component in Angular, I use these double brackets. Remember, we did that in our app component. I believe, let me double check that, I'm not. No, I'm sorry, we did that in, which one did we do that in? Experiments? No, oh, we have it in title here, so that's one. Maybe we didn't do it here. Maybe I'm losing my marbles, sorry. Um, so anyway, if we need to insert information into a file or into our HTML file in Angular, we use these double brackets, open and close, double curly brackets. So what we're gonna do is copy this and now paste it twice more. So we say crew of one and then crew of two. Again, it's gonna give that the first index, second index, and third, sorry, third entry in that array. So come back over here, I refresh. And of course, I always forget that ng serve. Let's go and start that thing up. So this is how we insert information there. Any questions on that? I see it work here in hopefully just a moment. Almost there. What do you call a hot dog on wheels? On what? On wheels. What? Fast food. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I love okay, it. That's what I'm <laughs> no, no, keep going. That, that, we need that. Oh my gosh. We need to write them down, honestly. All right, so we refresh our crew and we see that nothing has changed. And that's a good thing. So we replaced our code. We come over, we refresh this, and everything's a okay. Now, if you really want to test to make sure that your code's actually working, let's go ahead and just switch the names. Of Jessica and Raja here. And we see that when we switch out that zero and one and switch them, uh, switch those places, then that's what we do there. So, or sorry, then our page actually loads to what we just saw. So as we can see that flipping that we, and then we know that these updates are actually occurring and our code is correct. So awesome. Any questions on that? All right. Then on to part number uh, to number two then, use CSS to add different colors, fonts, borders, et cetera, to your dashboard. All right, and then continuing on to move the components around to see that affects the display of the data. So this one I'll leave to you all. This is just about exploring kind of just the nature of everything. So it is very important, just like have fun with it. Just see if you plug in some, some things in different places, what exactly occurs? What happens if you use a component 100 times? Like what's gonna actually be rendered? But for number two, 
anything that you would all want to see in CSS on any of the components that we built today? Up to you all. Make the names red. Make the names red? All right, let's go ahead and make the names red. So with that one, if we're just doing styling for these three crew names, I see that we have them all within list items. So instead of making classes for each every single one of these, I see that my names will only be wrapped in, be wrapped in an li statement. So hypothetically, if I just do li here, and then I say color of red, we come back over here, looks like our li for this one is all red. Now these are all the names that are red now. Anything else we want to see? Anything else in depth more we want to go? Any of that? Or is this the peak of it? Like, I just want to see them in red. I'm good. Let's see. Let me see if I can. Let's see what else here. Stuff I'm muted. Is. It asks for borders. Let's put in borders. Borders. OK. So what do we want to do? Borders around what portion? Mission name and carrier rocket. Mission name and carrier rocket. Okay, so it's these two portions right here. So if you ask me to do it around this, I have to ask myself, okay, where's this located in the midst of all my components? Well, from what I remember, all three of these things are within our header component, I believe. So I go up to header. In my HTML, I see that these are all of the portions. And this specifically, oh, and this is where we were inserting information. This, I wasn't going crazy. This right here is what we want to have a border around. So let's go ahead and do this. So if I do a border in H3, it's going to do individual borders around two H3. So if I want to contain, or border to contain both of these H3 statements here, I need something to wrap them in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a div here, and I'm just going to put class my border. I'm going to take this and paste them in there. All right, so if I do anything, or if I come back over here, nothing has changed just yet because I haven't provided any styling for this class. So let's go ahead and do that next. I'm in my component.html, so I need to go to my component.css. And here's where I need to create my class. In order to start creating a CSS class, what punctuation do I start with? Dot. A dot, very good. Dot and then my dash class, or is my border, my border. All right, funny that you asked borders because I actually do not recall I do border CSS at all because it needs, I do, but I don't, like it needs specific little things. Well, well, I'm my bad. Still. What was that? Oh no, not at all. No, I love it. I need to be challenged. But what we can do is start with border width. We'll do a nice, that five pixels. Then we say border color. And in this case, what color do we want to make our border? Green. Green. So we'll say just green. All right, there we go. And then one more thing it needs though is a border style. Now this one, you typically do solid and you see a lot of that, but let's not go fun. Let's go dashed. So if we go over here to our stuff, we see a nice dashed border now around our mission name and carrier rocket. Even more fun, if we wanted to, let's go ahead and make this solid. Come back over here. Again, it's hot reloading, so it will refresh the page for me automatically. We see now a solid border, but I don't like these pointy edges. Let's go and say we're gonna want a border radius five pixels or let's do it like let's do 17 pixels make it obnoxious come in here and now we see a nice curved edge there so this right here is borders any questions on this or anything else that we want to see hop back over to the css um kai can you show us the page please yeah, absolutely. Thank you. 
Now, if you're asking yourself too, I've seen border CSS written differently. Absolutely. You can also write it all in line. That is the part that I do not recall always of writing it all in line. It's, you have to place them in specific areas and that's the one I always forget. So let's see, border CSS. Blah, 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 blah. Need. Style. Let's see, border. Where are you? There it is. Here we go. So if you want to do just a border inline, you can all do it just on one, like one line too. I like to do mine in individual CSS, but people who really like to optimize their CSS will do it all within one line. Up to you. Technically, I should tell you that this is probably better to do it, but I do like my individual ones just because I can do more things to it. I know what I'm tuning exactly. So we all have preferences, but I should, as your as the instructor person, recommend doing the inline stuff. But that's borders. Anything else that we would want to talk about with CSS? So Otherwise, Kyle, yeah. inline inline styling is better than uh, external style sheet. It just it just reduces the amount of lines in your CSS. It, oh. It's not necessarily better. It's just maybe a more recommended practice. For borders but it's very minuscule so I just got to give you that recommendation to maybe try out in line but thank you yeah yeah absolutely Rachel thank you very much for posting that too in the lecture questions so it looks like uh, it needed to be ran with the cache clean force awesome awesome all right, anything else anybody wants to see on CSS? Otherwise, that is all we have for the studio. Any last minute questions? Anything else? Anything that we talked about today? Any final questions? Can we reduce the border size? Because we have the empty space, right? Uh, I don't want to see the empty space with the borders. I want to see only the uh, contents with the borders. So when you say empty space, are you talking so, about the empty space over here? Yeah. Okay, with that one, it might be a little bit trickier because you're asking to wrap only this specific portion. Yeah. So let's go and see what we can do with that real quick. Um, so the div needs to be wrapped. Deal with auto, I guess, technically. Let's see. Let's see if that'll fix it. This is how we get into that. So let's go and see. Mm. There we go. Need to fit content. So we can say fit content just like that. Press save. Come back over here. I've never used the fit content CSS. Look at that. Good question. I learned something new tonight too. So you can teach an old dog new tricks? Sorry. Oh, I oh absolutely. I, <laughs> I am an old soul when it comes to programming. There's that's what I love about this this job and just like the the areas that literally you cannot take a break from learning. Like something new is coming out all the time. Some nerd somewhere else is throwing something new at us all the time, and I love it. Absolutely wow. love it. New tech every day. But this one with CSS, this is actually awesome because I've been with CSS since I was a wee tot and never even have seen the fit content stuff. So that was cool. All right. If that is it, everyone, that's all I have for you all tonight. So awesome. Kyle? Yeah, Amy. Can you, can you do number three and move the components around? Um, I can. Is there any anything in particular that you'd want to see? I was going to leave that one for you all, but I will absolutely move it to anywhere you want to see. What, what were you looking to get? No, I, I just wanted to 
just to kind of observe what you know what you were doing um just to make sure that i knew what i was doing yeah yeah i mean like yeah for real or for, for sure for sure so to go over to the app component.html here so i want to be moving the components around what if i move my components into here what would happen save that come over here it's gonna look a little weird but take a look all of our stuff is going to become stacked instead of next to each other. Remember why it does that is because if we go to our app.component.css, this is our box class. If you recall, the box class was originally surrounding those three components. So why they were next to each other and not stacked is because of this magic right here called flex or the flex box. This is what allows things to line up next to each other. So again, if you want to see that kind of stuff rearranged, Flexbox is your, your savior. Honestly, Flexbox is highly used because of all of the different types of devices we use today. Flexbox allows our websites to shrink to our phones and also expand to our desktops and have, of course, our tablets in between. So that would be one thing I really would want to show you, and I think that's probably what they really wanted to get at. I mean, we can also have a lot of fun with it, too. But what if I just... Uh, Copy this and just paste it a few times. Save that. See that we'll have a nine by nine there, or a three by three there. Because we can reuse those components. Anything else that anybody would want me to kind of do to get in the weeds? Thanks, Kyle. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. How about this? This is a fun one. What if I take these two app components here, remove this, And inside app crew now, ooh, this is gonna get crazy, everyone. Hold on. <laughs> we're gonna go in here to our HTML and we're gonna paste in those components. What? Let's see what happens. Now it's gonna look absolutely ugly, but <laughs> technically it's still there. So we have our app crew. I believe it's only be used once. So I don't know why it's pasting three times there. Did I not save it? Oh, I didn't save it. That's why. Save that. Let's try that again. Didn't save it before, so we didn't see that. Now we see it as we see crew, and then over a little bit is the equipment and the experiments. So not only can you use those components together, but you can use components within components. We've seen that. And that's what we just witnessed here. Now, is it going to look nice? No, because our HTML is going to be rendering a little bit differently of how things are being injected. But again, we just want to have fun with it. Awesome. Yeah, I'm happy you made me do number three. We got to explore some new stuff there too. Anything else anybody else would want to see? I, my, my Angular still says schematic workflow failed. Okay, so we might have to take a look at it, Hannah. Uh, feel free to put time on my calendar um, and direct message me about that or ask your TA for sure. Um, we'll get that. We'll see what, what's going on with that. Also, if you can, send me a screenshot of the, yes, of the air and that might, be, that might be helpful. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Good night, everybody. All right. Looks like we're done then. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording here.